Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, Matt Matt Ship. And how are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. Uh, this is a special show because we can only do this one once every four years. It's leap year. It's leap day. Yeah, let's do it, Matt. Let's jump in. Hey, uh, with Santa Anita Saturday, big Saturday card in flux, uh, we decided to focus on a couple of very interesting races, I think, from Gulfstream Park, Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Oaks ramifications for sure. Uh, we got the Fountain of Youth. We got the Devona Dale. Are you ready, my friend? I am ready. They're pretty good races. Absolutely. Let's jump in, Matt. We have a field of nine down there in the Fountain of Youth at Gulfstream Park. They're going a mile 16th on the main track, of course. $400,000 grade two. We see two big name returners, Matt, in Doorknock and Locke. We've been waiting for these two to come back. Yeah, we certainly have. It, it's a good matchup uh, and, uh, and and it's an interesting field. Yeah, Doorknock uh, gets the uh, our morning line call as the slight favorite over Locke. He was preferred in the most recent Kentucky Derby Future Pool. And of course, he was uh, uh, flattered when Sierra Leone uh, did what he did uh, down in New Orleans. Without further ado, Matt, we're going to start from the rail out. And the rail is a good place to start in this uh, field because uh, another one of the Pletcher horses, of course, he has locked. But another one of the Pletcher, too, is Speak Easy. Speak Easy is a son of Constitution who's only run once. Uh, but it was a it was a very nice coming out party for Speak Easy. It was a it was a huge race brian in that debut finish and interestingly the race was in january and speakeasy was not one of those usual pletcher horses uh, that uh, are a uh, very short price he went off at eight to one uh, constitution sun windstar uh farms connection all, all the right things that you would think this was a a good one and and he turned out to be a huge uh, speed figure in his debut for uh, the three-year-old. He is cross-entered, Brian, in an allowance race earlier on the card. And from what I understand, Pletcher is not going to decide until Friday where they're going to go with the horse. Yeah, we're, we're filming this early Thursday, Matt. Um, I'm kind of thinking Speakeasy will end up in here, but we'll see. I'm not Pletcher, of course. Irad Ortiz would be up if he's in. Certainly a strong third choice. He won that uh, maiden race by a length and, uh, a length and three quarters, and it uh, came over good competition. We're going to talk about the horse that he basically battled with most of the race and uh, pulled slightly away in the stretch from because he's another interesting horse as well. But a very good debut, 121 and four-fifths, in that maiden race at Gulfstream Park, seven furlongs, five weeks ago. Number two looks like a long shot to me, Matt. One of two from uh, the sire, Mucho Macho Man. Uh, Ladon Bro has not uh, uh, distinguished himself in a big way in five starts. He's coming off a second place finish, a pretty well beaten second place finish in a swale stakes that looked a little light this year. Looked a little light. He did have some trouble in that race. Uh, got uh, stymied trying to make a move along the rail. Um, but, however, he also ran in the Remsen stakes, the quality Remsen stakes, but he was distanced in that race. Nowhere in the Remsen for sure. Number three is that horse that I alluded to earlier because this is the horse that was favored in that maiden race five weeks ago going seven furlongs at Gulfstream. His name is Victory Avenue. Uh, Johnny V will be up in the saddle uh, for the son of Arrogate. Uh, three to two in that maiden race. Him and Speakeasy hooked up. Speakeasy got the best of them late, but that was also Victory Avenue's first race. They left the other, uh, the rest of the field pretty far behind. Fast time, big speed figure. Victory Avenue certainly eligible to move favorite off a, a debut that would win most times. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, when we saw that, uh, eight to one price that speak easy went off at you knew someone in that race had to have been bet pretty heavily and been very very well regarded and that was uh victory avenue for trainer gustavo delgado yeah yeah delgado might have a good one even though he got beaten his debut that debut is good enough 
So to think that Victory Avenue is a very talented horse, he was bet like it, as we said, in that debut performance. Let's get back to the field, Matt. Number four, a little bit of an interesting horse. I, I, I mentioned that there were a couple mucho macho mans. You see him a lot down in South Florida in the race. And real macho, um, it didn't look to be going anywhere too fast in his first three races. He won one of his first three. It didn't didn't run great in his two losses. But then last time, he beat a very um, uh, highly regarded horse and what looked like a very good effort. Uh, his name is Born Noble. Uh, he beat him uh, last time going a mile at Gulfstream, and that came, uh, I guess, just four weeks ago. Yep, uh, last month in an, in an allowance race. And, yeah, uh, all those things that you uh, said about Real Macho describe a horse that's uh, – uh, got some good credentials and and maybe has a future uh, in three year old races uh, coming up. Uh, it's a little bit of a tough spot though. A little bit of a tough spot, but uh, if Born Noble is a good horse, like we suspect he might be, Real Macho would be probably my favorite long shot in this field. Matt Tyler Gaffleon, of course, has been winning a lot of races. Uh, for years now, but uh, you see him more winning races like this. And uh, Real Macho, uh, if he can uh, run back to that last race, maybe move it up a little bit, he's not out of it. Number five, of course, is Doorknock. Doorknock is uh, the full brother to Mage. I I, I can't believe that uh, full brothers are going to win the Kentucky Derby two years running, Matt. But uh, Doorknock did pretty much everything right as a two-year-old. Looked really good for trainer Danny Gargan. Yeah, absolutely. And I've had an interesting uh, four race career uh, uh, last uh, thus far. Uh, uh, he was second in his debut in a maiden special weight at uh, Saratoga and uh, uh, ran in uh, uh, the sapling at Monmouth Park before becoming a really n nice maiden winner at Keeneland by more than six lengths and then on to that win in the Remsen that a lot of people liked on its own merit. But then, as we mentioned, when Sierra Leone came back and won so impressively, uh, it flattered Doorknock even more. Yeah, for sure. Doorknock, uh, he, he's getting better with every start, or he got better with every start as a two-year-old. Of course, we haven't seen him now uh, going on over three months, but uh, he's been working well has the son of good magic for, again for Danny Gargan. Uh, two longest races were his two best that Keeneland uh, uh, made and win by six and a half lengths. And then, of course, beating a very good field, including Sierra Leone in the uh, Remsen last time. So we're excited to see Doorknock back in the uh, Fountain of Youth. On that note, Matt, let's, uh, let's pop over to the time form U.S. pace projector because I think there is a story to tell here with the pace projector. Um, Gulfstream Park, often uh, it's good to be out on or near the early lead, especially in a race like a mile and 16th distance. Uh, but uh, the pace projector might tell a slightly different story here, Matt, and, and, and we see that fast pace button, and uh, we see some of the main horses, uh, at least the main horses we've talked about so far. Speak easy if he's in the race, Victory Avenue, the number three, and Doorknock, uh, one of the big returners, are all projected on or near a fast early pace. Yeah, again, I think it's one of those, you know, uh, it's one of those possible fast paces that comes up on the time form pace projector because of the quality of the field and the quality of some of the races that these horses are coming out of. So do you, uh, are you saying you don't completely buy the fast pace, likely fast pace here? Uh, I, I don't know if it's the kind of fast pace that uh, uh, is is sprinter fast pace kind of numbers. It's is, is it the kind of fast pace where these three horses that are out on the front pretty much have no chance of being around at the end of the race? Probably not. I agree with everything you said there, but they're all talented and uh, horses who like to be out there on the lead. Of course, the, the the one and the three we've only seen once, but they're coming out of a fast seven for a long race. All right, let's get back to the field, Matt. Uh, number six, perhaps another interesting horse. I'm not sure. He's a son of mastery. Safi Joseph has him. And uh, he looked like a good thing when he was debuted uh, not that long ago, winning by more than 10 lengths. Couldn't quite live up to that last time, though. 
Yeah, that was back in November. And like you said, it hasn't lived up to that, but it's hard to live up to a 10 length uh, victory anyway. It's got a third place in an allowance race in February. That was behind Real Macho, who we talked about earlier. And I should say that Merritt is also entered in that race seven on the undercard that Speakeasy is in. Yeah, that's right, Matt. Good point. Um, and, and good point that he was in that uh, Real Macho race, that allowance race we liked, where Real Macho narrowly beat Born Noble. Uh, Merritt was uh, beaten by more than five lengths in third that day. But coming off a big debut win, a little bit of freshening in between, Merritt is a horse who could move forward off of a decent effort last time against some talented horses. Number seven is a stakes winner, Matt, a stakes winner out of Classic Empire. Uh, if you haven't been watching the last few years, you, you you might not know that Michael Yates has done a lot of good things down in South Florida as a trainer in recent years. And Frankie's Empire is another example. Uh, four of seven lifetime, Matt, coming out of a nice win in the swale. Yep, nice win in the swale. Nice win in an allowance race uh, at parks uh, had, relative to Others in this field has some good experience, ran in a stakes race at Delaware Park, ran in the Sapling and the Tyro at Monmouth Park. So uh, he tried the turf in that Tyro. So a lot of experience and uh, uh, certainly seems to be getting better. Yeah, he's certainly better than he's ever been. I don't really like his races that were at the distance of a mile before. So this will be his longest race yet. And he, and he kind of failed at a mile, but uh, certainly uh, gotten good. Uh, recently, the uh, the swale was his best race yet, and it was over the track. Uh, another long shot, perhaps, to take a little bit of a look at. Number eight is locked. This is the other horse we've been waiting for. And if we go back to that pace projector real quick, Matt, you'll see that the, the four favorites, as we project them, three of them out there near the lead, on the lead, and locked quite a bit farther back number eight there on the graphic from Timeform US. Uh, locked, of course, much like Dornock. Uh, he had four starts as a two-year-old and distinguished himself, I think. Both of these horses distinguished them, themselves in their four starts as two of the best juvenile colts in the country. Locked is a son of Gunrunner, who we both love, Matt, and he is the other Pletcher. He was a grade one winner last year. Yeah, grade one winner. Derby, uh, Derby trail winner. Derby points. Uh, he, and, you know, in, in the similarities with Dornock, both of them have a win on the Derby Trail already. Already, I think if uh, if either one of them finishes first or second, or if they run one two, they're both probably going to have enough points to get into the Derby uh, already. So uh, interesting. Uh, Locked uh, was a very impressive winner of his maiden at Saratoga. Uh, and went on to that Breeders' Futurity, was third in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Yeah, and, and, and there's a few things. First, let's be clear, uh, Dor Dornock and Locke, uh, though they have yet to race this year, and this will be their first race as three-year-olds, these are two of the horses that are most highly respected in the Kentucky Derby Future Wager. Sierra Le Leone, of course, moved forward after his Risen Star win, but Dornock and Locke all along have been two of the favorites on that list. So these are two really well-liked horses returning locked um you mentioned the breeders futurity win at keeneland i thought was very nice and then he was the one horse really making up some ground in the stretch it didn't look like the breeders cup day or breeders cup juvenile uh was a track where you uh, wanted to come from too far back but locked was was running well down the stretch to be third not far behind muth for second in the breeders cup juvenile last time He's been away slightly even longer than Doorknock. Uh, this will be about four months now for Locke since we saw him in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile out at Santa Anita. Uh, he, of course, was uh, earmarked for the Sam F. Davis at Tampa Bay, but had a very minor setback. And uh, he's, we expect him to be ready. Pleasure to have him ready here on Saturday. Number nine, probably another long shot. That's a uh, dancing groom. Antonio Sano, who's done some big things in South Florida in recent years, has this son of Vino Rosso. Stakes experience is there, but it's not exactly awe-inspiring, Matt. Yeah, three uh, three graded stakes appearances. Uh, the Holy Bull, the Kentucky Jockey Club, where he was fifth and sixth, and a third in the Champagne. 
but uh, he's going to have to do a lot better than that when you consider the credentials that we've been laying out on uh, on Locked and Dornock. Yeah, distant third behind Timberlake, who came back with a nice win last week in the Rebel, and he was fifth by over six lengths last time Dancing Groom was in the Holy Bull. All right, interesting fountain in the youth field. I, I, I want to say the same about the Devona Dale. This is a 16th of a mile shorter, Matt. It's one mile at Gulfstream. Uh, while the Fountain of Youth is race 14 of a, uh, of a big card at Gulfstream Park. The Devona Dale will be a little bit earlier in a stakes-laden card. It's number nine on the card, race nine. One mile, 200,000, also a grade two, and also a race that looks to have real uh, implications as we look forward to Churchill Downs. This for the Kentucky Oaks, of course, uh, leading the way is the returning champion, just FYI. She'll be in the three spot. But let's start at the rail, Matt. Uh, Miss Saley. Uh, daughter of Maximus Mischief, looks like a long shot. She did, she will get blinkers off. She has some experience coming into this Devona Dale. She does have some experience, Brian. Most of that experience was in Florida, bred races. So we, we can keep that in mind. Uh, was third most recently in an allowance, uh, won a Florida bred allowance, uh, and uh, was third in a Florida bred stakes race, breaking from the rail against this pretty distinguished bunch yeah yeah uh, yeah distinguished might not be the word i use but there's a ton of talent in this devona dale and miss saley coming off a nine nine and a quarter length loss in an allowance race just does not do it for me frankly Matt. but the number two on the other hand the number two on the other hand that's uh that's todd pletcher and that's uh, irad ortiz jr and that's the daughter of into mischief her name is leslie's rose uh, something's got to give, as they say, Matt, because we're going to talk about three undefeated horses in the race. Leslie's Rose, two for two so far. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say the same thing, Brian. Three unbeaten horses. And, of course, these days in today's uh, today's racing, uh, you know, we're talking about three horses uh, that are unbeaten. But one of them has three races and the other uh, other two have just run twice. Leslie Rose is one of those that's two for two, uh, a, a nice maiden special weight win at Aqueduct by nine lengths. Uh, she went south with, uh, uh, location-wise, she went south to Pletcher's uh, winter home uh, uh, to, to train and won an allowance race, stretching out to seven furlongs, uh, impressively racing on the front end. Please note that this uh, mile is a one-turn mile at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, good point, Matt. So she's uh, she's been moving up the scale lightly and easy as she comes to a one-turn, one-mile here. Also of note, the horse that she beat, she after that nine-and-a-quarter length maiden win in New York, she only won by a length last time, but the horse she beat, Gunsong, another filly that's pretty highly regarded, and she came back with a very nice win following uh, running second to uh, Leslie's Rose, and that was, uh, I want to say, seven weeks ago for Leslie Rose's last race. And she has recency as the expected second choice. She has recency in her favor as she faces the champion, Matt, just FYI. Of course, just FYI was terrific last year, uh, winning at three different tracks. She won on uh, off track. She won on dry track. She won on both coasts. Uh, she she did it all. On the other hand, she didn't necessarily overwhelm in winning, but she's a two-time grade one winner, and you have to give her the respect of a champion. Yeah, you sure do. Uh, a maiden win at Saratoga, and then uh, and and then moving to the Frisette that was run at uh, Aqueduct this year, and as you mentioned, that win in the Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile Phillies that helped uh, cap a, such a huge year uh, for Hall of Fame trainer, Bill Mott. Uh, um, three for three. Uh, I don't know if the mile maybe is, is her best distance or not. Certainly longer, the better. Yeah, she's a daughter justify and she looks like she can go a distance. Uh, a mile can be a tricky Distance, a one-turn mile, maybe even more so. Some fast fillies in here. Just FYI, you know, you might even be surprised that we have just FYI Leslie's Rose, at least in the same ballpark on our morning line odds. But uh, Leslie's Rose is very well liked, and this is not a simple spot for just FYI returning. 
on Saturday here in the Devoted Dale. Number four is a very fast filly too, Matt. Fiona's Magic has done little wrong. There's that trainer again, Michael Yates. She's been first or second in all four starts, uh, shown a lot of speed, uh, shown some quality down there in South Florida. She's coming out of a sprint race. I guess she was second last time in the grade three forward gal. Yep, absolutely. Uh, a broker broke her maiden at Gulfstream Park in November and then won an allowance race there. Uh, the following month uh, 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 looks like a talented filly and uh, with the uh, one turn mile uh, uh, advantageous for her. Yeah, she's not out of it going one turn. And uh, that speed obviously is uh, something to talk about as we handicap the Devona Dale. In fact, let's uh, let me get the right graphic up here. Let me get the right. There's the Devona Dale time form U.S. pace projector. And you'll see that uh, they have the champ there, number three, just FYI, out on the lead. But they are talking about a fast pace projecting uh, projection again. Number four, Fiona's Magic, and number one, the long shot Miss Saley are expected to be close, and some others not too far behind, including the other undefeated Phillies, the number eight, who we've yet to talk about, into Champagne, as well as the number two, Leslie's Rose. Uh, just with, just FYI on the lead in this fast race, I'm, I'm not sure I'm buying that, but uh, it should be a solid pace with all the favorites at least involved. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure that I agree with uh, just FYI being out on the lead in this race. Agreed. And it might very well be Fiona's Magic, who we just talked about. Uh, the next horse on the list, Matt, it, you'll see at the other end of this uh, pace projection. Her name is Who Could Ask for Mo. And I tell you what, Matt, if you're looking for a long shot in the Devona Dale and you're expecting a pretty strong pace, as we are, you could do worse for a long shot than Who Could Ask for Mo course a daughter of uncle mo trained by shug mcgahee she's only won one out of three races but uh, last time i think she ran second to a very nice filly named power squeeze in the sun coast at uh, tampa bay downs and she had some trouble in that race as she rallied for second yeah she also broke her she also broke her maiden by six lengths at uh, tampa bay downs and that was after debuting at aqueduct uh when she uh, when she ran third if all these undefeated phillies uh take on the task of taking on each other too soon in this devona dale as well as the speedy fiona's magic who could ask for mo could be a horse picking up a lot of pieces a whole lot of pieces down the stretch in the devona dale number six another interesting philly is queen's martini uh, mucho macho man danny gargan again there there's that sire trainer uh, that i talked about a little bit in the fountain of youth she was a nice winner of her debut way back when last summer at Saratoga, had uh, a bunch of time off and was thrown into the hot seat when she faced power squeeze in the cash run. But everything said and done, she didn't run all that bad. No, she didn't. Got a second place uh, in that in that stakes race. And, and I think, you know, some of those placements, probably Gargan would have liked to uh, have uh, run her in a softer spot, maybe an allowance. But sometimes at Gulfstream Park, with the limited number of races they have on the dirt, with that uh, with that Tapita track and all the turf races, uh, uh, there aren't all the opportunities on the dirt that that these trainers want. Sometimes that win at Saratoga by almost six lengths was in one of those uh, restricted maiden special weight uh, races that are restricted by. Uh, uh, sales price. Yeah, good point, Matt. Um, Saratoga win was nice, not particularly fast, maybe a little lesser competition than some Saratoga maidens were used to. And then she was second by a full five lengths to power squeeze. But on the other hand, there's enough in those first two races to think that she could be a filly that will move forward, especially coming off the layoff last time. Number seven is New Diamond. Uh, we're seeing the sire B jersey a little bit more of late, uh, Patrick Biancone, the, uh, the the old veteran, brings this long shot into the field. She's won uh, one, uh, actually she was uh, a first out winner, but she was uh, third last time in a Gulfstream Park allowance. Doesn't exactly inspire confidence for this race. No, that, uh, uh, that debut win was all the way back in July in, in one of those uh, early uh, uh, two-year-old races and then uh, came back and ran third in February. Uh, uh, yeah, 
not a lot to uh, uh, hang your hat on, but maybe this horse will uh, uh, develop as the year goes on. Yeah, and and what I said about Queen's Martini, you you could say about New Diamond. I, I just happen to like Queen Mar Queen's Martini's two races better than New Diamond's two races, but she is a filly who has the potential to move forward in her third start, second off a layoff. Number eight, a filly I like a little bit, Matt. Her name is Into Champagne. She is the daughter of Into Mischief. Ian Wilkes brings us this filly, and uh, if you saw her debut at Ellis Park way back last summer. Uh, you had to be impressed with what she did going five and a half furlongs at the uh, at the Kentucky track last summer. And then uh, coming back, she caught a sloppy jack at Gulfstream Park, and she handled it in winning the Glitter Woman. Yeah, I think you especially have to be impressed that uh, she came back to win that uh, stakes race because uh, that debut win was all the way back in June. So it, it, it was impressive to see her come back and win again at Gulfstream Park. She was a favorite in both of those races. Yeah, well, that debut performance was big. And, and, and the long layoff or not, I, I think people are pretty high on into Champagne as a nice filly. This, of course, brings up the competition a whole couple levels. Uh, but she is also a filly who's been able to pass horses. Um, she's been relatively close on fast pace, but she has passed horses. And I think that's a nice thing. And the uh, perhaps the post position outside of uh, everyone might uh, be a good spot for her as well. Uh, we expect her to be the third choice in the Devona Dale Matt. Two good races, two good races, Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Oaks implications down in Florida. Let's get right into our top picks here. I, I think these are interesting races and I wanna find out who you like best in each. We'll start with the boys, the Fountain of Youth. You go first, my friend. I will go first. Yeah, it is it's certainly an interesting race uh, with two legitimate derby contenders. Uh, the the matchup, Doorknock and Locked, is uh, going to be exciting to watch. Uh, I am going to lean towards Locked and make him my top pick. You're going to lean towards Locked. I'm going to lean towards Locked. And I, I think the biggest reason for me, Matt, I, you never quite know after a three- or four-month layoff how these really good two-year-olds are going to come back. Timberlake made it look pretty easy last week. Uh, but you don't know Locked, Doorknock, how they've developed in the time since we last seen them. But for me, the decision came down to I think there's a little bit of a pace advantage for Locked in this one. So, uh, yeah, I'm going locked as well. But I, I look forward to seeing those two horses that are coming out of the maiden race, the debut maiden race, both Speak Easy and Victory Avenue as well. Should be an interesting race. Matt and I are both unlocked. I think he'll be the second choice behind Doorknock, Mage's full brother. The Phillies, Matt, the Devona Dale, who do you like? Devona Dale, uh, I, I like uh, Leslie's Rose in here, keeping in mind that without question, just FYI is the horse to beat. I think we talked a little bit about uh, the fact that uh, the one turn mile may suit some others a little bit more than just FYI. And for me, uh, that one that I think might enjoy the one turn mile most is Leslie's Rose. Yeah, Leslie's Rose has done nothing wrong, as they say. She could be any kind. And I think that second race of her life is probably even better than it looks on paper. I went uh, maybe for a little bit bigger odds. I went with the other undefeated horse. And, and you and I are thinking alike that this is a race where just what FYI is a heavy favorite is worth taking a poke against. I think into Champagne can pass horses. She's on the outside. I really like the talent she showed in both of her first two races. I think she has a shot. I'm not sure she's as good as just FYI. I'm not sure she's as good as Leslie's Rose, but as a third choice, I'll take a shot in this one turn to Lona Dale on Ian Wilkes's Into Champagne. Hey, Matt, I want to give a quick shout out to our old friend. He feels like an old friend anyway, Senor Buscador. That was nice to see him winning $20 million Saudi Cup on Saturday. And I think a lot of our viewers uh, agree with uh, nice to see the American uh, journey horse, if you will, uh, do his thing and pull it out in, in uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, uh, that that was quite a performance on a racetrack that looked like it was playing as 
as favorably as any racetrack could for Senior Bus Buscador and, and Junior Alvarado. Gave him a great ride, took advantage of it. Sure would like to see him coming home to run here in the U.S. as opposed to going to the Dubai World Cup. But, hey, throw another $10 million at him and go for it. Ten million or more, yeah. Uh, with nice exacta for me. I, I I I bet the rallyers in there, as I said, on horse center, so that was good. But uh, pleased that uh, a horse like Senor Buscador won such a good race. Matt, was that your parting shot, or do you have another for me? Oh no, I got I got another one, Brian. The uh, uh, the Preakness Future Wager is in action uh, this weekend, and that's sponsored by Horse Racing Nation. So if you are itching to uh, bet on some of these Bob Baffert horses in the Triple Crown, uh, uh, Nysos and Muth, you've got an opportunity to do that in the Preakness, where we're likely to see those horses running. Yeah, if I was going to bet that race, I'm happy to see it's uh, sponsored by Horse Racing Nation. If I was going to bet that future wager, I can't imagine betting anybody but Baffert, because you just don't know who else will be in the field. Um, all these horses pointed to the, towards the Derby, but yeah, nice host, smooth, uh, Mayman, uh, a lot of nice Bafferts that I, I think will uh, work their way towards the Preakness. So an interesting future wager this weekend to take a look at. Uh, all right, Matt, uh, besides a uh, horse racing nation, let's uh, thank our friend Candace Curtis in the home, home office for the race graphics. As always, we so appreciate her and her help with the show. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there as our sponsor. And of course, Timeform US for their pace projectors we like to use every week. We'll be right back here next week on the Derby Trail, Matt. Are you gonna be with me? Absolutely. All right, we'll see you then folks. Until then, have a good luck, have good luck and a good week. We'll see you next week on Horse Center. <laughs>